Statistics and Excel. Correlation large data sets focus on Z-score relationship part number two. Get ready, taking a deep breath, holding it in for 10 seconds, looking forward to a smooth, soothing Excel. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, uh, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But, but that's okay, whatever, because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our, trust me, I'm an accountant product line. Yeah, it's paramount that you let people know that you're an accountant because apparently we're among the only ones equipped with the number crunching skills to answer society's current deep, complex, and nuanced questions. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. Here we are in Excel. If you don't have access to this workbook, that's okay because we basically built this from a blank worksheet, but we started in a prior presentation. So if using a blank worksheet, you may want to begin back there. However, if you do have access to this workbook, there's three tabs down below. Example, practice blank. Example, in essence, answer key practice practice tab having pre-formatted cells so you can get to the heart of the practice problem. The blank tab is where we started with a blank worksheet that had just our starting data sets on it and where we will be continuing this time. Quick recap of what we're looking at. We're thinking about the correlation relationship two different data sets to see if there's a mathematical relationship or correlation between them. If there is a mathematical relationship, the data points are moving in some kind of format together. In other words, the next logical question would be, is there a cause and effect relationship? And if there's a cause and effect relationship, the next logical question would be, what is the causal factor? And this time we've been looking at height and weight data. We had more data than we've seen in prior practice problems. So there's 25,000 lines of data in our practice set for both the heights and the weights. We calculated the mean standard deviation. We noted that both of them seem like they conform to a bell-shaped curve uh, type of scenario, which doesn't necessarily mean there's a correlation but might give us some indication of what's going on between them. That would make sense given the fact that we're looking at things that are kind of nature related, heights, lengths of things in nature, for example, often having a bell-shaped type of curve. We then got our mathematical formula. We did our, our table that we've seen in the past to calculate the correlation manually or with Excel, you know, but in, in a manual kind of format. And then we also did it to double check it with the uh, data tool set. And then we also get, used the data tool set to give us the general data for uh, the two data sets. Now, noting that both of these seem to conform to a bell-shaped curve, we now are going to say, let's plot this thing out uh, to the bell curve and then look at the z-scores related to the two bell curves to see if that could give us a better understanding of the z-scores. So I'm going to select these two data sets again. We're going to select from uh, A to B. So we can say Control C. A to B and then control C so we can copy and then we'll put that in the double A cell. So I'll put them in double A and control V pasted it down and make a skinny Z. Let's make a skinny Z and that's going to be our starting data. Now I'm just going to copy over the same calculation as well that we did for the mean and standard deviation. I'm just going to copy this stuff. I'll put it in the same relationship to these cells because there's no absolute references it should paste and pull in the right information so i'm going to say Control v and then if i double click it's pulling in the right data that looks good let's make a skinny ac here and then we're going to plot this out uh, as a bell curve so using our norm.dist so i'm going to use x h and then p of x and we'll say this is for for H. I, I should probably say H and W, but I'll just do it that way. <laughs> and so I'm going to plot these out as we did in the prior section when we looked at uh, bell curves. So I'm going to go uh, home tab, 
Let's go to the font group. Let's make this black. Let's make it white and let's center it. And then let's say that we're gonna take it standard deviations, number of standard deviations. I'm looking at the heights here. So I could start at like zero and then go up in inches from zero up to the highest height, but that's probably too much data. We don't need that uh, much data in it. So let's just take it four standard deviations up and four standard deviations below as has been our custom. So I'm gonna say four standard deviations. This is gonna be for the height and this is gonna be for the weight. These are my headers. Let's make that a header tab, home tab, font group, black, white. We'll center it. And then we're gonna say that we have a lower X and the upper X. And I should probably be using H and W, but <laughs> we see what we're doing here. We're gonna say lower and upper. Maybe I should do that. I should just say this is H and this is W. Uh, and so we'll just say this is H and this is gonna be P of H, let's say. And then I'll say, okay, so four standard deviations, this equals the mean minus the standard deviation, 1.9, uh, times four. So I'm going to say, okay. And so that's going to be my lower point. This equals the mean times uh, one point, actually the mean plus 1.9 times four. That's going to be our upper point. And when I do uh, the weights, I'll do the same thing over here. The lower point is going to be equal to the mean minus the standard deviation times four and the upper point is going to be the mean times the standard deviation i'm sorry plus the standard deviation times four so four standard deviations up and below for the weights and the heights so now let's so i'm on the heights right now so that means i don't need to go to zero inches i'm going to start at just 60 we'll round it down to 60 inches and then I'm gonna go up to 75 inches. So I'm gonna go 60, 61, I'll go inch by inch here. We're gonna inch our way up, inching our way up to 70, let's go to 76 inches. Inching our way up to 76 inches. And so there we have it. And then the P of H is gonna be our norm.dist. So this equals norm.dist function we saw in a prior presentation because we're going to approximate the data with like a smooth curve like with a bell shape uh, so we're going to say this is going to be the x which is that right there we're going to say comma the next argument is the mean which is going to be that 67.99 f4 on the keyboard dollar sign before the letter and number comma standard deviation here f4 on the keyboard dollar sign before the letter and number comma should it be cumulative i'm going to say no because we're just using that one point closing it up and enter and then let's percentify it home tab number group percentify decimalize double click on the fill handle dropping it down so there it is then we can have our z score this is the z score of h and so now same format we're going to say black white center similar calculated calculation of the z-score uh we did before but now we're we're using the kind of the smoother curve of the actual approximation of the bell curve based on the data set information so this is the equal brackets each data point minus the mean f4 on the keyboard dollar sign before the letter number closing it up divided by the standard deviation f4 on the keyboard dollar sign before the letter and number and enter double click in the fill handle to drop it down so there we have it let's select all three of these make it a little bit thinner let's make a thinner ag as well and so there we have it now, if we were to plot this out, I can plot this out and we should get our bell curve. So I'm gonna say control shift down, control backspace. And if I was to say insert charts, I won't do an area chart. Let's do a, just a normal kind of bar chart just to see the shape 
So there it is. So now we've got a, a smoother bell shaped curve, although it's uh, it's it doesn't have as much you know detail in it here. So we're gonna say, okay, so there is that. Let's do the same thing for our weights. So I'm gonna say now let's do the, the weights. So it's gonna be W, P of W, and this is gonna be Z of W. Selecting those three, home tab, font group, black, white, center, wrap. We don't really need to wrap it, but we'll do it anyway. And then we're gonna say this one, lower, we're gonna have in pounds, go, let's go to 79. 79 pounds and then we'll pound our way up we inched our way up last time now we're going to pound our way up uh up to 174. i'm pounding my way up to 174. i'm sick of inching my way up now i'm pounding my way up man because i'm that's how it has to be because people wasn't wasn't happening with the inching and this is going to be equal to the norm dot dist and the x is now 79 comma the mean is now the 12708 f4 on the keyboard dollar sign before the letter number comma and then the standard d is now 1166 f4 on the keyboard and comma the cumulative no zero or false closing up the brackets enter percentifying it home tab number group percentify adding some decimals double clicking to drop it down let's do the z score the z score equals brackets each of our data points 79 in this case minus the average weight 127 which seems light to me uh but that's again because i'm obviously so yoked up that i'm heavier than that so it's not like i'm it's for health i'm healthier by being heavier just kidding so then we're divided by the standard deviation uh the, here and then we'll double we'll double click to drag it down so there's our z's okay so now that we have that uh we can then plot our bell curve for this one selecting the middle column Control shift down Control backspace to get back up i'm going to put that over here somewhere home tab or insert tab charts let's just do a chart like this we get our bell shaped curve so there it is all right so now let's just kind of think about these uh z scores the relationships between the z scores so i'm going to copy this i'm going to pull this to the right pull this to the right and let's just try to match up our our z scores as best we can I'm going to make a skinny AK first, and then I'm going to select all these columns from AH to AN. I'm going to say Control C. I want to paste that here, but I'm going to paste just the values only. I'm not going to pull over the formulas. Right click and paste it one, two, three. I'd also like to paste the formatting, just not the formulas. So I'm going to right click and paste the formatting only. So now we have it looking the same, but there's just hard coded numbers. In other words, no formula. I'm going to move this stuff to the right so I can have some room. And so these pictures need to be moved to the right. So we have our space to work here. And then I think it's easier. This one has less data. So I'm actually would like to move this onto the right side. So to do that, I could select all of this. And then I can say, I could try to move it this way, but it's useful to note that th it's the same to do a cut. If I cut that and paste it over here, control V, pasting it over there, that's kind of the same thing. Then I'm gonna delete these columns, which I don't need from AO to AR, right click and let's delete those. We'll make a skinny uh, AS column here. So there we have it. So now what I'd like to do is for the best I can is match up the the Z scores. So they're not going to match up automatic all the you know exactly, but we can match up the Z scores basically as best we can because that's the the tool that we can use generally to match up the data. So for example, the second one here, I can take this and move it down and say this uh, is close as close close pretty close to uh, this one. 
so it's actually close to this one. 3.68, uh, 3.69. This one, I'm gonna grab this and move it down. It's pretty close to the uh, 3.15, like that one. It's pretty close between between those two. Two point, this is gonna be 2.63, 2.63. Three, it's pretty close to that one. And then we're gonna say the next one is 2.1. It's pretty close to that one. It's kind of in between these two, I'll put it there. And then we've got the 1.57, 1. uh, 1.57, it's pretty close to that one. And then we've got the 1.05, it's pretty close to that one. And then we've got the 0.52, which is exactly that one. And then we've got the zero, which is pretty close to that one. And then we've got the 0.53, which is pretty close to that one. And then we've got the 1.06, uh, which is pretty close to that one. And then 1.58, 1.58. And then 2.11, which is around there. And then the uh, two, and then this is 2.63. And then this is 3.616. This is 3.68. And this is 4.21. Uh, All right, so something like that. And then here for each Z that's pretty close to each other, I'm gonna take the difference between between the weight, uh, the, 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 the height and the weight. So I'm gonna put the difference over here. I'm gonna say this is the difference between, so I'm gonna take this is the W minus, well, let's just call it, let's just call it W uh, minus H, H. And I'll make that black and white. Home tab, font group, black, white. And let's center it. And then I'm just gonna subtract out for each of these points the, the weight, 79 in this case, minus the height for each point where the Z-score is as close as we can get. And I'm gonna copy that down. Copy, paste, 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 paste 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 and paste and then i'm going to copy all of this information and try to just squish it together so that i can put it in one so that we can graph it so i'm going to copy this i'm going to paste it over here but paste it just the values only and then I'm gonna just move all this stuff up so it's in a nice column here. So I'll, I'm just gonna delete these columns right here, or these rows, I'm gonna delete, shift up, and there's the next one, I'll move that one up, and then I'll just select these and say delete, and shift up, and so there's the next couple, so I'll put this one here, this one here, scroll down a bit, and then this one can move up, and then I can delete all of this, right click, delete, shift up, and then I'll move this one up, and then I'll move this one up, and then I can move this one up, and then I can delete all of this, delete, shift up, and so then let's move this one up, let's move this one up, and so we still have got more, I'll delete all of this, right click and delete, shift up. And then I'll move this one up. And then I'll move this one up. And then there's more here. So I'll say right click, delete, shift up. And then I'll move this one up and I'll move this one up. Is that everything? There's still another one here. Let's move that one up. And so I think we have everything. So now we've got those differences in a column that again correspond to the similar z-scores. And the point here is that that if I plot this, you're gonna you're gonna see a trend, right? And that's the relationship 
of the z-scores that we're looking at so if i say insert here and the charts and i insert a chart on this you could see basically that relationship so you can and that's so we'll call this uh difference uh dif difference and z difference well x this is going to be uh, uh w minus h for related z score uh score and so the so the idea here is that we can uh i'm losing it that's not what i'm trying to do excel you know what i'm trying to do we see that relationship be relationship between the differences of the data points that are related to the same z-score so just to recap that what we did here is we we plotted out the bell curves and then we calculated the z-scores and then we tried to map out or compare the z-scores that were the same or as close to the same as possible for both of our two different data sets and then with those similar z-scores we took the difference between the weight and the height our two data sets we put them together so that we can then plot them and we see this kind of linear type of relationship uh, between them just to give us a kind of an intuitive sense of how the z-scores are being used to do this correlation type calculations all right let's go ahead and and just make these uh, uh format these like we typically do let's go to the home tab over here and make this uh, blue and bordered i'll make this blue and bordered blue bordered i'll make this whole thing control shift down uh border blue i'll make this whole thing control shift down border blue make this whole thing control shift down let's make it border blue and then i'll make this whole thing it's going to be a little bit difficult to do to control shift down i'll say control shift down 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 up and then we'll make that border blue and then this whole thing control shift down let's make that border blue let's make the same skinny size i'm going to select the ax the as uh this one and let's go to the left and pick up all of our skinnies and we'll try to uniformize the skinny eyes the skinnynesses and so we'll select all the skinnies all the way across all the skinnies need to be uniform a uniform skinniness and so there we have it the fat ones could be all different variants of of fat but the skinnies have to be uniform so then we're going to go to the review spell check it correlation you did it again you did it again uh i'll ignore that one ignore 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 correlations wrong ignore 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 okay looks good